will Toyota return to Need for Speed 2019? As you probably know, if you're a Need for Speed, if you're a gamer in general, Toyota have been pulling out of racing games for some reason. The only game that you're really able to play with Toyotas on is Gran Turismo, and they let you know that on Twitter if you moan to them. In 2009, a Toyota executive said, Realistic video games make cars unnecessary. All my machines are no good. Make the need for cars disappear. I don't quite think you understand. Mr. Japanese Toyota man. I am so sorry if anyone got offended by that. <laughs> See, for me, there's multiple reasons as to why I have a car. Number one, I like cars. Number two, I like to be able to get places. In America, if you hadn't realized and you haven't been to America, because again, it's a completely different world to a lot of places. In a lot of places in America, there is no way for you to get anywhere without a car. To me, okay, in America, which is definitely one of the biggest markets, you get a car so you can actually get places and you want a nice car so i live in a small village it would literally take me right now to get to tesco if i was gonna walk about 30 minutes if i was going to drive it takes me all but five this is why we drive cars and i like to drive nice cars now of course then pulling out of games because of this reason was complete speculation this is a 2009 thing and they've only just now pulled out of it and it was just an executive it might have just been some old guy that's in the business it's someone's dad and they thought yes dad we need to keep you getting paid so you're on the payroll in my head it was more to do with the fact that games and media in general glorify the old toyotas whereas we don't really glorify the new ones have you've seen the bad press of the new supra it's not really fair not really justified in my opinion i know people are actually gonna like the car when it eventually comes out but let's go back and look at some of the old ones. A86, Celica, MR2, 2000 GT, and of course the Mark IV Supra and every other one that was available. In my head, the return of the Supra, the Supra brand is coming back as you know. In my head, that makes sense as to bringing back Toyota, uh, uh, making a slow, if not fast, hopefully, return to games. And as to why I think it could possibly return to Need for 2019. We've seen that the new Supra, again, is definitely there for, for, for the modification scene. That's who it's aimed for. That's why they went with the exact setup that they did. They've done some testing to make sure that we, as the customization nation, can, can play with it. There's also rumors about Toyota bringing back other models of cars that have been long dead and gone to make the brand seem fresh and cool and get the one last hurrah of these sports cars before we have to go hybrid everything. But as I was saying, the new Super is being built as a platform and we all know this. Anyone that has any knowledge whatsoever of what's going on in the world of motoring, it's a platform. It's made to be modified. There's a lot of new EU regulations governing what can be done with a car and a lot of these cars are made in Europe, BMW has a huge part in this car. And because of that, obviously, there's a lot of EU regulation naturally made from the ground up from the factory because it makes sense to do so. The sound is quiet. When I got the experience, remember there was a camo wrap experience. That was a super fun day. Thank you so much again for Toyota for taking me out for that. But when the car flew past, it sounded like a gust of wind. There was no sound there. Cars 10, 20 years ago definitely would have made more sound. And obviously on a lot of new cars, there's a lot of fake sound being pumped into cars. I got to drive the LC500 recently, which again, fantastic car. I got to drive the V8 version where they pump, they, there's a big hole in the car cabin and then it pumps sound through, which is fantastic in sport mode. And then when you go to the hybrid version, it sounds like a Gran Turismo vacuum cleaner, which made me think the other day, thinking about it, Gran Turismo's fake sounds are the future. Because when we get to electric cars, they're gonna pump sound in, or when they're hybrid and they pump sound in, they put fake sound into the cabin, they sounded like vacuum cleaners. Gran Turismo was actually ahead of the time and now they've gone backwards because they're doing proper sound. The car screams modify me. It has vents that go nowhere and they're being begged to be used just like the, on the race car, for example, the, the concept race car, should I say. The car is made to be modified. Toyota very clearly know that that's the market and that's the very first thing that a lot of us are gonna do. We do know that Toyota's in Gran Turismo solely because it's a very Japanese game. There's not much you can do out of line, obviously, but this market is not really for just the Gran Turismoers. The market for the new Toyota Supra is those that modify. They know full well that as soon as you grab that car, you purchase that car, you're gonna rip the exhaust off. You're gonna rip out the fake sound creation. You're gonna slap on a big meaty wing, new wheels, get it looking 
perfect. They know that you're going to tune that BMW engine without probably any internal modifications getting a lot more power than the standard Mark IV Supra. We know that Need for Speed is the customization game. When you think to modify a car, that is the game you go for. It's always been the case. Back in the day, we built our first Supras, our Skylines, our Mustangs, whatever car you dream of or possibly own now is probably based on the fact because you tried it in a game before or you saw it on TV in a movie, but games gave you that extra level experience of building a car and definitely the reason as to why I own a Skyline. The tuner market focus and the new program that modifies the Toyotas of slowness and make them faster and exciting and builds cars from the ground up, for example, the Supra, pretty much says to me that they have to be in the next game, if not coming back at some point soon. This is gonna be a controversial to a lot of people, but we know for a damn fact that the new Supra is going to absolutely annihilate the previous Supra for multiple reasons. Even if you just want one, it's the automatic gearbox. It's just gonna be faster. With the layout of the car itself, it's got the short wheelbase, but it's wide. That's just perfect for the car it is. It used to be that the Mark IV Supra could destroy every other single Toyota there was and they don't sell that car anymore so in my head the only other sports car that Toyota really sold was the GT86 which as we know doesn't have a very fast engine at all. It was made for the modification scene and they knew for a fact that people were going to modify it. But let's be real, it was bad for business. In the old Need for Speed games, let's say the old 2015, had the Supra and the GT86 and the Supra was a bajillion times faster, had more capabilities because of the fact that the engine configuration of that car was just better. It was bad for business. It would mean that you would go out and buy an old used Supra opposed to a GT86. In reality, the Supra costs a hell of a lot more, but this kind of introduces that, okay, so so the new Supra is faster, so that means we can put both in the same game and we know that people are going to prefer the other one because it is faster. In my head, that just makes sense. If Toyota has no plans to add their cars to future games, I'm going to be sorely, sorely, sorely disappointed and I will voice my opinion because I have purchased one and I want to modify it on games, okay? That's what I want. Whether you do it as a DLC pack later in the release, or you do it at launch. I want the new Supra and the old Supra in the game so we can modify both. To me, the only reason I like the Supra is because of Fast and Furious and Need for Speed. It's the only reason I like the Skyline. It's why I bought a Skyline. I fell in love with the 86 because of Need for Speed 2015 specifically. I never really followed the car until the game came out. It was the cover star. It set the theme, the mood, everything about 2015 GT86. It was really the only sports car of that caliber from the Japanese market. N Nissan has gone on to make supercars now, and you know, that's great and all. Everyone likes them. But further down the spectrum, the GT86, it's 25,000 pounds less in America and used. It's half that. And it, it was just the, the perfect car to be in that place. And I think the Supra is going to be the next iteration of that, or even the rumors of the other Toyota cars that are going to be returning. It's good value. It's decently priced. The insurance doesn't kill you. In fact, you could probably insure a Supra being a new driver in the UK for a pretty decent price because it's a new car. It, we always say the UK insurance is pretty bad. It's a new car and the standards of tax are going to be pretty low. It's just to me the perfect time to do this because in 10 years time they're probably not going to be able to make any cars really like this anymore and sell them to many people because there's so many rules in countries that are coming up especially with the eu that are saying no death to the car give us some electric electrifications but there you go that's my opinion on i do think it's going to be returning it was a bit of a long-winded video but i wanted to get my point across in full detail let me know if you agree with me do you think they're going to make a return to 2019 i beg that they do i think that they possibly will because of this new direction that toyota is good they're making a what is it a thousand horsepower supercar or something or aiming pretty close to toyota supercar what i'm excited i'm excited for this for this little last leg of the petrol car it's going to be a great send-off I, in my opinion, I think that obviously all the German companies are going to go electric pretty darn quickly, but I feel like the Japanese companies are going to push for this craziness just before the end of the car as we know it, which is pretty sad, but maybe we'll get some hybrid supers in 10 years time. 
which is kind of weird to think everything will be a hybrid basically otherwise it won't really sell except in america all you'll, you'll have all your muscle cars so i'll probably just keep buying american if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash like subscribe if you are new and i will see you in the next video press